Hey, today we're going to show you how to do our two-piece stainless steel ring. This comes in two halves. It enables you to get the inlay look uh, with wood, plastic. By doing a through hole, you don't have to split it or anything like that. Stainless steel borders let you have a different look as opposed to a comfort core where it is only the material. This will sandwich in between them and you can do it with a wooden blank or a plastic blank. It is a six millimeter wide channel. Uh, it does have to be exactly six millimeters. So digital calipers are essential in making this ring. We're going to glue the blank to the scrap. We're going to prep the surface a little bit. We're just going to rough this with 150 grit. And just run some 150 on this real quick. You can use two-part epoxy, you can use uh, double-sided tape, whichever one you want. Just going to put down a paper towel to keep the glue off of the lathe. Just going to use thick CA on this one. All right, so we're going to use thick CA. We're going to make sure we have a pretty substantial amount on the scrap piece. Just a bit. On this, I'm going to try and keep it relatively centered and just bring your tailstock in. Just apply some pressure while it cures. Once your glue is cured, you're going to round this down, take off all the corners. You have it round, you just want to use your spindle gouge. Just draw it straight back to make sure that your end is straight. And we want to mark the center of rotation so that we can measure from it. You want to use the sharp end, the toe of the skew. Very carefully, just go in and just turn a dimple right at the turning center. You're going to use the longer piece and get a reading for how big the hole should be. This is 838 and we're going to go a little under half of that uh, so we can do most of the turning uh, or make the hole more exact once we clean it up. So 838 I'm going to go down to eh, 4 2. Go 4 1 5. Yeah. Close enough. Just going to put that in. Use the other side of the caliper to just mark. Just scratch a little line there. And then you want to use a pencil get on that line, something that's going to show up and just hand turn and hold the pencil there. That way you've got a really clear dark mark of what you want to go out to. And we're going to drill the depth. Okay, you're not actually doing an exact hole at this point. You're just trying to get it deep enough that you can then widen the hole. I use a super skew for this. I just go in. Pull. You want to frequently stop your lathe and just check to see how close you are. 
closer you get to that line, the more you want to stop. Okay, it's starting to go in. It is stopping a little bit, so that means the hole's not perfectly straight. Straight in. Also use the calipers to make sure it is to depth. That actually has to go a little deeper. Just gonna use a skew to make sure I've got a tight corner there. Okay, that is over six millimeters, which is fine. With the split style rings, it is very important that this actually be six millimeters wide exactly. Otherwise, it, the seam will not close properly. So you wanna set and lock your calipers as close to six millimeter as possible. And you are going to mark And then you just set your pencil against your mark and turn. Use the tenon tool to get a good clean line. Again, you are making sure that you are at six millimeters. No more, no less, it's very exact. And we're going to part directly down from that 90 degrees. So now we're going to glue, and we actually have to use the pen press for this uh, because the two parts, there is a slight Trying to get started and put it in the press. And then we're actually gonna use the press to mash them together. And then hit with the accelerator. Make sure it's pressed through all around. Now can you do a close up to see how slight a seam it is? And that's how small the seam should be. That's why the, the width and the length and everything when you're cutting it off has to be so exact. Now for this, you're going to use your steel ring bushings. Appropriate size. Slide onto the mandrel. It'll self-center with the taper. And I'm just going to put some spacer bushings on either side just to give myself a little bit of extra room. Lock down the lathe and tighten. All right, we're going to be actually reducing down here rather quickly. So we're going to use the roughing gouge but very gently. We don't want it to catch or break. As we're approaching it, we do, do want to watch. We don't want to nick our bushings or dull the edge of anything. Okay. Okay. 
We'll switch over to the super skew and just start rounding over the edge. Again, around this side. Now to do that, that uh, rounding, you just kind of sort of roll the edge as you're moving. And you can get that rounded profile. Again, you don't want to nick anything, so be very careful with your motions. Don't want to ruin my profile, so at this point, I'll switch over to the 150 grit sandpaper. I'll use that for the rest of my contouring. Also, I curve the sandpaper as I'm going over. That's the, the edge. That actually helps keep things from flattening and getting caught. It helps with the rounding over profile. Try and do it with a fresh edge if possible. You can use cross hatches and numbers and right on the side. That way you never lose track of what stage you're at or which one is next. You want to do it in order and you want to be light, but you want to clear out everything. Stop the lathe every now and then and do cross sanding. This will help get rid of scratches from the previous grit and it'll help you build up and get a good shine faster. As you keep going, you will actually start seeing more and more of a mirror shine. The, heart, the light reflection from the lights will get harder. You can also use a micro mesh wet. I personally do not like using it wet on wood, even if the CA is a barrier. That's personal preference. Again, the higher the grit goes, the more gentler you want to be. Uh, you're trying to basically shine and buff. You're not trying to shape or anything like that where you need to use a lot of force. All right, with the uh, split rings, even though we have a small seam, it is still slightly there. To completely eliminate it, we need the inside ring uh, polisher sanders, uh, sanding drums. And to use them, you need either a rotary tool or you could use a drill uh, that's affixed with a vise or something like that. I'm going to use a rotary tool. And the grits go from 240 all the way up to uh, 5,000. So... You know, work it up and down while you're also moving it around the inside cylinder. Um, basically, we've set this up on the TM42. 
and we're going through the polishing same as on the rotary tool. You know, you only have to use the one hand. Uh, disadvantage is that the lathe doesn't get up to the same speeds as a rotary tool, but it is slightly easier to actually do the inside and get good pressure and even uh, coverage.